went through seven chemo treatments and 33 radiation treatments. I had no insurance. The DR was very reasonable. We were here a little over six weeks. Had a good friend that kept on my rear about going in to the doctors and find out what was going on. Finally did, found out I had uh, bladder cancer. I can't remember the size of the tumor, but it was quite large. I stayed here in the D DR to have it done. I had no insurance. I went to a, a private hospital here in the DR. It was called Holmes. Mm -hmm. It's in San Diego. The doctors were great. They followed the protocol on uh, the American Cancer Society. Exactly what they listed was going to do. That's exactly what the doctors here did. The doctors here could speak English. The nursing staff is a little not so good about English, so you were kind of left in the room with somebody that couldn't speak English, but it all worked out. They could use their phones. They kind of let me know what they were doing to me, but uh, it, it was good. It was a good experience. The DR was very reasonable. I went through seven chemo treatments, treatments yes. and 33 radiation treatments. Mm -hmm. I got an infection the, after the third chemo treatment, which put me back in the hospital for seven days. And then I had to stay off the chemo and radiation for another seven days after the hospital stay. So you take the seven days of hospital stay, the urologist, the uh, cancer doctor that prescribed the chemo, and then the radiation doctor, three doctors plus the uh, infection doctor, all of that cost me a little over 21000 and that was here in the DR. And from what I understand from the states, we're looking at at least 120000 So a person with no insurance needs to look elsewhere besides the United States for health care because it is out here, and it's just as good as the states is. You just need to have faith in the doctors that you're using because most of the doctors in the DR, they go after their schooling, they go back to the states for their residency. And then after they get their residency done, then they come back to the DR and for their practice. So your doctors here are just as good as they are in the states. You guys determined the numbers on if you had been paying for insurance, what it was costing well, I mean, you. It, it, for me and her, the last time I checked into insurance, for me and her, it was a little over $2,000 a month. So that's $24,000 a year for me and her to have insurance, right? Right. So in one year, by not paying an insurance premium, I was able to pay this hospital bill off, and I'm still $3,000 ahead. So... And that's know, just one year. This and that's just years. one year. And I'm 63 years old, and I haven't had insurance in the last 20 years. Because, again, back home in a small environment, workplace, you don't get insurance anymore. You have to provide your own. Or the company gives you a percentage of the insurance, and then you got to pay the rest. And then you're out of pocket. So if I had insurance back home and out of pocket $10,000, it's, it's just no brainer. The, the states need to wake up and realize that their healthcare system is just, it's not good. There's too many people getting sick that can't afford the insurance, can't afford to go to the doctor and therefore they're gone. And the ones that do stay there in the States to pay for a cancer treatment, they're totally broke when it's over with. They have nothing left. They've mortgaged their houses. They've mortgaged everything they've got. And all they had to do is just do a little homework and look outside. You know, uh, like here, 
Uh, we had a good friend that went to the dentist, a root canal here, 150 bucks. You know, and you're looking at 1500 in the States. Mm -hmm. You know, and this lady dentist here is great. You know, nobody, I've never heard anybody complain about their root canal or a cap after they've gotten it. It's, the United States is just out of control, in my opinion, that lawyers and the insurance companies rule what we get. So what did you do before you started sailing? I was a manager of a small print shop. Okay. And then uh, come find out doing some more investigation on bladder cancer printing industry seems to hold a lot of bladder cancer people because mm -hmm. the rubber juvenator that you use on blankets and wash ups and the chemicals that are in the printing industry they have now linked to bladder cancer mm -hmm. but they are also trying to link it to hereditary and I did have an uncle that uh, had bladder cancer so I guess with a combination of both you know and uh, painters it's a high rate of bladder cancer because of the chemicals they used to use to wash their paint brushes and their rollers out and the spraying of paint so you feel pretty good right now I'm feeling great right now I think I beat it I go back uh, the first of March for an MRI and a, a, a ciscosomy. That's where they run a camera up into your bladder and take a look around to see if anything has grown back or what. But uh, all signs are saying that I've beat it. I had a big basal cell up on my shoulder that I was going to go into a dermatologist and have removed but after all this treatment it has disappeared so awesome if that's gone then so you, you know, think you, you there will be another day where you take where you're sailing and oh yeah we're already planning on ready. leaving out of here after next hurricane season and go back to the bahamas sweet and uh play in the beautiful water up there and um where did we meet oh uh, we met in uh, west caicos with uh your good buddy, uh, 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 Sterling. Sterling. Yeah. Trying to put his mask back on. Right. You were kind of a part of that. Yeah. You were watching it. Yeah. We all helped push it up to a point, and then it was the time for the big, big guns to come in. And that's when I walked away. I said, they got it now. It's, it, it's time for the lift to push it on up because we're not getting it any higher than this. And you and Charlo left a little before us, right? You Yeah, we you left. Found a we left uh what, uh two weeks before y'all did. How was your crossing? Our crossing was awesome. We left at nine o'clock that morning from Big Sands and arrived here at uh ten o'clock. So ten o'clock that night. That night. So you you pulled in in the dark. We pulled in in the dark. Uh okay. we were just you know, of course, that was summertime, and we could see, I could see everything, the inlet, but before we could get there, of course, dark got us. But I'd already seen the buoys and uh, already had it on my chart plotter to, to anchor out into the bay there mm -hmm. before we came on into Luperon Bay. Okay. So I anchored off, but in protection, and I think it was only about eight feet of water. And then uh, the next morning we got up and moved on into the dock. When was the last time you played? Uh, like 30 something years ago. 30 something years ago. Okay, so we were just a cut to. <laughs> was this your third move, Alan? Yeah. I know. I, third or fourth. I, I can be. I think you've got me. I've got him. It was just it was just how it all worked out, but I don't think his king can move, so that was a pretty quick game. These are the tales of Boab.